Hello again and welcome back to the final episode of The Spoken Line. We are going to be looking at in this episode about the creative process and inspiration when it comes to art making. And it is both a daunting process and also a very exciting process for me in particular. Um, I kind of like the aspect of being a little unsure as to what's going to happen. I like the possibility of being able to have the artwork go either way. Um, sometimes they are unsuccessful for a little bit and then sometimes they just really flow really naturally from the very beginning. So we're going to take some time, we're going to look at this process and I hope that you are able to gain some inspiration on your own as we go forward from here. So um, let's take some time and see what it takes to make some art. In the background here is a piece that I had worked on. You can sort of kind of see some faint underpainting in the panel that's behind me. And um, I worked on that a couple of years ago and decided that it really wasn't something that I wanted to keep. So I have painted over it and I intend fully to uh, spend some more time with it in the coming months. So oftentimes when I am thinking about art, I kind of rely on um, everyday inspiration, really. I have mentioned in a previous video that art happens every moment and there isn't really one particular aspect that, that just for me, really creates an aha experience. I really kind of live life and kind of allow everything in life to just flow into the work. So this past year, obviously everyone has been dealing with shutdowns and a lack of travel. And so for me, I use travel, I use um, everyday experience, but I use travel for sure to kind of store up memories, slivers of memory, and so sometimes those memories come back in, um, you know, over three years or more. Um, it, it just really depends on how the painting progresses and um, what happens within that time frame that will all of a sudden just pop out in a painting and or I'll look at something and say, hey, that reminds me of um, a time that I was someplace. And so that kind of helps me to to proceed forward in a painting and think about a more specific experience or a more uh, specific stored memory. And so I use, use them in that way for sure. One particular example of a stored memory is probably about five years ago. I, my wife and son and I were in the city of Rome and I was walking around in the late afternoon near uh, our apartment and I happened upon a fountain, one of the six talking fountains in Rome. And this uh, particular fountain, the Romans, it's a very ugly fountain. And so the Romans, it has not aged very well. And the Romans started joking that it was Babuino uh, and that is Italian for baboon. And it's this poor um, fountain of a, of a guy in a lounging position and he just looks like, you know, he has had better days for sure. But at any rate, I walked around the corner and I was, uh, you know, met by this fountain and a little surprised by its, its grotesqueness. But uh, six years later, I was making a painting that was kind of ugly. It was, it was honest, I gotta be honest, it was an ugly painting in the beginning for me, um, beautifully ugly as it turned out. And so that inspired uh, that particular work. And so the, the work actually became um, Babuino. Art making, in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of artists of all disciplines, is and can be used as a spiritual uh, experience. And so one really great example of that is the jazz musician, John Coltrane. He looked at playing jazz as a spiritual exercise. And there are 
uh, quotes from him that where he even says, you know, I, I practice and then when I get on stage, I just let all of that go and I just allow the, the music to play itself. And so that's kind of the way I look at making art. I kind of allow it, you know, I, I have technique, I have all the things that, that are necessary to make something, to be a maker of things, but I really like to allow it to paint itself and, and dictate and be part of. It's a co-creator uh, ship process that happens. In the last video that we did, we were working on the materials aspect of making art and we made a painting panel together. And this painting behind me, I have started and that is actually um, that particular panel. So again, it is spring um, in Pennsylvania where I live and in Maryland where you are, it is spring. And so it's a little easy to say that it's a little too easy, I should say, that just because the colors in this painting are really bright and flowery that you could call it a spring painting. But, you know, sometimes it is what it is and I don't question it, I just kind of flow with it. So in this particular piece, I have worked a couple of different painting sessions, maybe a few hours each time, maybe three hours each time. And so it has developed um, into what, it, what you're seeing now. And so I'm not 100% sure where this is gonna go. I'm surprised a lot of times myself and I enjoy that aspect to it. Um, I enjoy being surprised by joy when it comes to painting. And I don't know where this is gonna go from here. I just have to, to see what happens. One tool that I do use when I'm not sure where something is gonna go is I like to move things around and I like to turn them upside down and see if um, it gives me a different idea or a different vision of what could happen from there. So sometimes I'll do that, I'll elicit that uh, technique to switch it around so that I don't get into like a rote pattern of how something is gonna be and I will um, start working on it again and see if I can find something and discover something new in the work um, that way. So uh, it is helpful for me personally to, since I am really trying to just allow the, the work to kind of come out on its own and be, and naturally develop that I, you know, am more than happy and more than glad to just let the work, you know, take charge and I, at that point, just kind of am the vehicle for it. In the way that John Coltrane played music and in the way that I like to create art, it is a sense of self-discovery as you're moving along. So um, using everyday experience, using ordinary experience, and kind of getting into a place of like uh, art muscle memory, um, you know, I just go back each time to make art and I have created a discipline for myself so that even when I'm not painting, even when I'm not in the studio, I'm thinking about art, uh, even if it's kind of like a latent thought, it's still always there and I treat life as like uh, always an everyday experience of absorption of inspiration. And so all of those things that I see every day and moving around, um, you know, is a part of that. So there is a, a saying that says, you know, enlightenment happens by carrying water and chopping wood. And after enlightenment, you're still carrying water and chopping wood. And so I look at making art that way. I'm, I'm in the everyday experience in the, what people would consider ordinary experience. I feel like I am always constantly being infused with inspiration for paintings down and art making down the line. So it's not anything that is difficult. It's not hard. It's just something that you have to just, you know, kind of get into the flow of it um, and learn more about yourself and what you, what your voice is and what you want to say or do. I think sometimes um, when people think about making art, they have learned things that are counterproductive. You know, they, they're told at a young age that they can't make art or that you can't draw. Um, and those things are just simply not true. 
Thanks so much for coming along on this journey with me through the art making process, uh, the materials that make up art making, and last but not least, the inspiration behind art. Um, it has been a long, lifelong journey for me to try and figure out, and I'm still learning, and I'm still progressing, and you know that is the way that is best for me when I'm looking at it like that. But you know, you're individuals yourselves. You have your own voice, your own vision, and you know you, you just need to do whatever is um, going to be appropriate for you when it comes to inspiration and uh, whatever materials that you're interested in using even if you're not interested in visual art you know as I said you know there are many medias that you can use and you know as long as you're being creative as long as you're making art and as long as you feel like you're growing that's the important part to the inspiration aspect to art making in my opinion is that you know if you're learning something if you're growing if you feel that it is benefiting you and helping you develop as a human being to be more um, engaged and empathetic in life then art has done its job so get out there enjoy it and don't be afraid to press out into new ideas and new aspects of life because that's what we're all here for. So thanks again for coming along and enjoy yourselves in whatever your chosen art field is.